class. Because the answers are here basically just single numbers without explanation. The answer is not, the, the solution I have for this class is just one word or just a figure, that's the answer. So we'll record this and it may help to those, it may be helpful to those who are absent today. So I, I suppose you've, you touched in when you entered. Yeah, touched in before the hour ends because then you won't be able to register your attendance. After, if you touch it after the uh, after the hour. So first question, and again we take turns to answer it. Um, it is usually it is usual to divide markets into four categories in ascending order of competitiveness. These are so monopoly, oligopoly, oligopoly. So next one is monopolistic competition. And the last one? Perfect competition. Perfect competition. So perfect competition. Right. So that's the uh, first question is done. Question number two. Which of the fall above, oh, four categories do the following apply to the member firm? So it's basically four of the different, uh, four different categories uh, needs to be used here. The information about four categories needs to be used here to answer the question. There can be more than one market category in each case. So for each of these um, seven points, you can use more than one category. So in other words, well, let's do it rather than me explaining because I'll give up, give out the hints otherwise, <laughs> or give away everything that I have in mind. So, A, who wants to answer it? Okay, let's start with him. He's rare, rare guy. Yeah, the question to you is um, everything except for perfect competition. So the firms face a downward sloping demand curve except for perfect competition case. Okay, so why is it so? You mean supply curve, Apple. but then this is about demand curve. Think about it. Why is it different from the others? Your answer is correct if it's an, a multiple choice question, but when it comes to explaining, you made an error here. So let's, do you know why it is? You, you probably know it. Think, why, where did you get the uh, idea that the, the perfect competition, the uh, firms in perfect competition will have uh, upper sloping demand curve, why? Where did you get that idea from? The book. Yeah. Maybe you're confusing it. You maybe are you you can you, maybe you're confusing it. So basically, remember perfect competition case. This is the market demand and supply curve. So this is demand and supply curve, and market equilibrium price. Mm. This is in millions. Determines the price at which perfect competitor can sell. So this is their demand curve. This is a competitor in thousands. Price, you know, perfect competitor, uh, firms in perfect competition usually take the prices as given, so they do not have influence on, on prices. That means their demand curve is straight line, perfectly elastic demand curve. Yeah? Did you understand that? Yeah, okay, that's good. So the book should say this, take, check that. Uh, B, who wants to answer it, please? Anyone? Go ahead, even if you don't know. You see, we now have a correct answer <laughs> because he had a misconception, now he understood it. Even if you don't understand, tell me, please. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and? Bless you. Maybe not all of us. Yeah, no. It's only perfect competition and monopolistic competition. The, the firms can enter the market freely. Okay, C. 
It's perfect competition. Perfect competition is one, and oligopoly is second, yeah. They may produce uh, homogeneous products or sell homogeneous products. D, firms are price takers. Raise your hand, guys. Who wants to answer this question? No? Price takers, so yes. Price takers are for perfect competition. Yes, it's only perfect competition, isn't it? Yeah. Every other one are price makers. They have power over prices because their demand curve is downward sloping. Mm. Demand curve can be upward sloping. Can be, but not in perfect competition. <laughs> it can be. So check that. You, you're right, actually, in some cases, but not in the perfect competition. Okay, so E. Uh, firms face an elastic demand, but less than infinity at the profit maximizing output. All of them? Yeah, go on. Uh, uh, yes. Downward sloping curve means elastic curve, but not infinity. So, Apart from so, perfect competition is infinity case. But everything else, every other category firms will have a downward sloping curve, which is elastic. Apart from monopoly, which possibly is inelastic because it's only one unique product they sell. So but they sell it at a price in the that's in the elastic section. Are you sure uh, you understood this point? Mm -hmm. So basically, what it what it is is that it, so. Monopolists' demand curve is a little steeper curve than the others. However, they actually sell at a price in this region, which is usually commanding greater than minus one value, which is an elastic case. They, they sell at a higher price. Make sense? So this requires you to read before you come here to understand what I'm saying, given that we have so much to cover, I won't spend any more because we discussed that in the lecture. Hopefully I understood it, guys. So the question is, firms face an elastic demand but less than infinity at the profit maximum output, maximizing output. All firms that have negatively sloped demand curve have this characteristics. Apart from perfect competition, where the, inf the elasticity is? Infinity. infinity. So this one, this, this here, commands an infinity value. So it's a large value, basically. We, we, we cannot determine. It's a flat curve, isn't it? That's why. Okay, go ahead. Next one, F. Raise your hands, please. So we, we did talk about this for the past two weeks, yeah. Yeah. And? In Monopoly, yeah. And how about others? Last week, guys, you, you did this, especially you two. Monopolistic company and? So all of it then. All of them use this. So this is a uh, universal rule. Profit maximizing output is where MR equals MC. Yeah. Did I teach anything else? I don't remember teaching anything else. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So now you know. Now you know it. Yeah. This is a yeah. question that will be in the test. Most frequent question actually comes in the test. Comes in the numerical section, not in the essay. However. Okay. Oh, similar, I should say, in the numerical part of it. So you need to be uh, calculating profit maximizing output, then how do, you, how, do you, how do you pin it down? So basically, this is the marginal cost mm -hmm. curve. Uh, marginal revenue is usually this one, and this is the average, average revenue. 
So this average revenue and margin revenue yeah, are down the sloping for monopoly, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. So the output maximizing out, uh, profit maximizing output point is this one. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. At this price, they sell. And then output is QE. So you have to just do this in the exam. Repeat the same thing. And as for the uh, perfect competition, this is the point. Because marginal revenue is equal to average revenue here, is equal to yeah. price. And also equal to demand curve. And this is your marginal revenue curve. It's this curve. So both, all of them follow the same rule. OK. There is perfect knowledge on the part of consumers of price and product quality. In which market is this? It's perfect competition usually. Perfect knowledge is all it tells you, right? It's this thing here. Perfect knowledge. Yeah. Perfect knowledge. I don't remember. Because they, they differentiate their products. This is identical product case, homogeneous, but I don't remember if anything that that was a rule, perfect knowledge, but this is certainly perfect knowledge, yeah. Perfect competition, sorry. Now, next one. Number three, now with the differentiation, usually the ideas are closely guarded. You know, the, you try not to let your competitor know the ingredients of your food, for example, at the restaurants, yeah? Or you patent stuff so that, you know, even if they know, they cannot use it. Or consumers won't know, for example, yeah? So uh, here, perfect competition case, everyone knows everything about each other, so identical case, products case and consumers also know. So anyway, so next one, number three. In which of the four categories would you place each of the following? It is possible in some cases that the part of industry could be in one category and part in another, if so name both. A village post office. How many post offices do you have in a village? One. One. So it must be monopoly then. One. So village level case, yeah, not national one. There are plenty of them, obviously. In so this is monopoly. And post office do not differentiate usually, do they? <laughs> so this is just post through the letter. Okay, next one. Restaurant in a large town. It's a large town. Monopolistic, Monopolistic competition? Okay. Yeah, large town. So there must be many more. They must be differentiating. So uh, this is monopolistic competition. Next one. I think banks are oligopoly. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. That's good. Yes, they are. You have only, what, eight or seven of them. You can count them. Yeah. But not the restaurants. Along the road here, how many restaurants do you have? Hundreds. Mile End Road. If it's a large town, it will be even more. You're right. So banks are oligopoly. Um, laptop and tablet manufacturers. Yeah. Oligopoly, yes, you can count the brands and apart from some unbranded goods, you don't, you don't have many more competing. Um, producers of barley. Hmm? Barley, are they differentiated? No. So none of the others. So it could be the monopoly or perfect competition. Monopoly. Barley. Perfect country, yes. I, I don't know if there is only one farm in my town. I mean, in a in country, in, in, in Britain. So there are plenty of farmers. They don't differentiate. 
that already excludes oligopoly and monopolistic competition. What's left is monopoly and perfect competition. Of the two, you know that there are many farmers in Britain, so it must be perfect competition. And then grains are traded internationally, so prices are taken as given by the farmers and by the consumers. So that must be perfect competition. Okay, local uh, water supply. Could also be oligopoly, if there is uh, the rule managed by two duopoly maybe two large companies for example yeah but usually it's monopoly yes um, in in the in in many cases water supply is usually monopoly uh, g local buses uh, it's monopoly. local buses yes. monopoly okay possibly oligopoly too if uh, Government. It depends, really. These two questions, F and G, are difficult to answer. In capitalistic world, supply is, for example, in Britain, Thames water supplies, and then there are many distributors. So this is mostly monopoly. But then the people might argue, in my country, there's <laughs> two distributors. So it's very hard to say anything about this point. Local buses, the same. You may have one on this local bus, uh, local route, for example, managed by several. Of them, or just one, Aviva or Aviva, for example. Yeah? So it's very hard to say anything about FNGs. Basically, monopoly or oligopoly or could be both. Okay, H, market for foreign currency? Perfect competition, yes. It's beyond the control of any of us. Pricing. We just take the prices as given, yeah? Buy at the given market rate, sell at the given market rate. We may basically uh, add margin or commission, but that's all we can do. We cannot determine the price, though, because it's mostly done by what investment bankers, and there are many of them these days. Right. So the following diagram shows the cost curve of a firm under perfect competition. A. How much will the firm produce in order to maximize profits at a price of eight pounds per unit? Go ahead. Do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling. She said 17. 17? <laughs> so let's do this. At eight pounds, this is perfect competition, isn't it? Firm in a perfect competition, this is their demand curve. Let me double check. Yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So, now, please give me the answer now. 70? Mm -hmm. So it's this, yeah. Profit maximizing point is where MC equals MR. Next. What will be the average cost of production at this output? Six pounds. Guys, everyone happy with that? Six pounds per unit? So average cost curve is this, so at this output level, six pounds. And the, uh, how much super normal profit will the firm earn at this price and cost? So that's next question, C. Are you sure? <laughs> so how do you know that? So, price, so profit is basically Total revenue minus total cost. Yeah. Total revenue is price times quantity minus total cost. So basically cost per unit times quantity. So let's put this uh, AC times quantity. So here quantity is out, P minus AC. Quantity is what, 70? Price is 8? 6. six. 140. So in here, it's this area, yeah? 
I think in the test it asks you to highlight it, so make sure you highlight it by sketching. So this is just uh, reiterate, eight pounds, your price. This is your AC per unit. Next. How much will the firm produce in order to maximize profits at a price of five pounds? So we go back here, five pounds. Did, did everyone find this one? Got the, got the answer correctly, guys? This one is easy. So at a price of five pounds, so this is my price now. And the quantity that corresponds to that is 50. Okay, next question. How much is supernormal profit here? Why is it zero? At that price, we are, we are kissing the bottom of average cost curve. It's the minimum point, isn't it? This is also the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, because that's demand, which is marginal revenue, which is also average revenue. So it's zero. Price here equals average cost, equals five. So zero profit. So they don't make zero, uh, they don't make super normal profit. Instead they make normal profit. Mm -hmm. Zero profit is a normal profit. Keep this in mind, guys. Next, how much will the firm produce in order to maximize profit at a price of four pounds per unit? Four pounds per unit. Hmm? Zero. Why is it zero? At four pounds. Oh, you're making loss. Okay, let's see if it's true. This is the uh, price line which is also average revenue and appears to be, happens to be marginal revenue as well. So marginal revenue cross marginal cost right here, right? So it's this point. Which is basically the price here is above average variable cost. So they still produce, even if they make loss in the short run, they will produce because the price is still above the average variable cost. Don't forget that. If the price is above Price is above average variable cost. Mm. They don't shut down. When when do they shut down? No. Yes, it's just when when the rule is when ABC equals price. Oh, ACB. <laughs> <laughs> Brain malfunction, guys. So when the price is equal to average variable cost, that's the shutdown rule. But if the price is greater than average variable cost, they continue price producing because it covers the costs of making the product and also contributes towards the fixed costs. Okay, next. What will be its profit position now? So how do you know that? So we have to show it, we have to show it. So where we are now, here? And this is our cost thing, isn't it? Mm. This, is our co it's, this is how much it costs us, this is how much we're selling it at. So <coughs> this appears to be the shaded area, appears to be the loss, yeah? yeah? Our price is less than average cost. The answer here is basically uh, 150, isn't it? So 60 pounds. So the reason is this, this distance between cost and four is basically, this is 5.5. So it's 150 here. So loss is 1.5 times quantity, 40, which is 60 now. Does that make sense, guys? Do you understand this? Yeah, you see? This is the average cost to make the product. This is the price we're selling at. In the short run, then, we're selling it at, at 1.50 loss, at a loss of 1.50. 
So that area then gives a total loss. I shave it. Yeah, the price is four pounds. We're selling, uh, we're selling at four pounds, but we're making it at five fifty. So difference is one fifty, and times it by the quantity we sell gives us the total loss. Right, next one now. Uh, so we've just answered the question. Yeah, this question. Below what price would the firm shut down in the short run? So when the price is less than average variable cost, usually, yeah? So what's the average variable cost in this case? 3.5. It's somewhere here, isn't it? 3.5. But this, below this price, they won't sell. So it's 3.5 maybe, 3 point, something like that. So yeah, 3. Yeah? How do you see this? Minimum? You remember, marginal cost cuts through the bottom of average cost, the average variable cost. So it's average cost equals average variable cost. When the marginal cost equals average variable cost, yeah. in this case, yeah. is where you shut down. In other words, when your price goes below that value. So you can only, you can sell up to a point where your price is 350. Below it, you are not even covering your variable costs. So if you sell it for three pounds and your product is being made three pounds fifty per unit, this this is where you decide not to. This is only for variable costs because remember variable costs change when you make product. Fixed costs don't change. So your variable costs are three fifty, <coughs> but your price is three pounds. Oh, sorry. If you go below three fifty, then you don't sell. Basically, it's, it's not covering even the material used as an input to produce this unit. That's the idea. Not the average cost itself. The rule is based on average variable cost. Average cost is different from average variable cost. Average cost includes the fixed costs. Variable cost is only uh, the costs that are incurred because of production. Yeah? Your average cost will still remain because your fixed costs are there. Yeah? You, you divide fixed cost by the quantity, it gives you average cost, even if your variable costs are zero. So it's the variable costs that are uh, triggering us to stop. So if the price is below 350 or the below the minimum of variable cost, we don't produce anymore. It's not, you know, the inputs, input costs do not justify production. Next, below what price would the firm shut down in the long run? Now this is a long run case. You don't want to stay, keep selling at the, at the, Below average cost case, uh, price. So what's what's this? Shutdown point. Below. Below five. Why is it below five? The lowest point of PC is five. So if it sells, the price is smaller than the average cost, then it just make it worse in the long run. Okay, short run. That's good. Short run. Shutdown point. Okay, let's write this down. This way. This is our price, and this is usually the average cost. This is your marginal cost. An average variable cost is some. Uh, yeah. This is also through the bottom of it. So anyway, so sh this is five pounds in this graph. So in the long run, it's a long run rule. rule Shutdown point is when price equals average cost. In the short run, shutdown rule is when the price equals average variable cost. Is it, uh, sorry, it's average variable cost, the cost that you pay to make one unit of product. It's an average total cost usually. Average total cost. Yeah. Uh, you, did you say variable cost or average cost? Average variable cost. Average variable cost is the cost that's uh, incurred due to producing the next unit usually, the unit you, that you made. It's in this case. It's uh, it's when incurred when you actually pay for materials. But average cost includes fixed costs too. Yeah, in addition to the materials. For the short run, only variable cost matters. For the long run, average cost matters for long run decisions. Make sense, guys. Everyone. 
please confirm. This is again an important one. Um, the name variable cost tells you that it varies as output changes. So in the short run, if we cannot cover our variable cost, we don't produce. So minimum price that we can sell it at is average variable cost price. However, in the long run, we cannot keep selling at average variable cost. We need to exit at some point. So the exit point in that case is then AC, nothing below that in the long run. Because then we keep making loss otherwise if we keep uh, selling at the uh, average variable point, average variable cost point. This is easy to understand, but requires a bit of reading and uh, sort of pondering on this issue. Is, is this clear at all, yeah? Okay. So this is, so average cost is, the price is kissing the bottom of average cost, that's a long run case. If however, price kisses the bottom of variable cost, this is the average variable cost. This is the price. This is the short run case. This is the long run case. So make a note that that's easy for you to read and understand later on. So we answered all questions. Um, H and I, hopefully it is all clear to you. Now this is uh, monopoly. You see, the picture is completely different now. Downward sloping. Demand curve. AR is also downward sloping as a result. Now, a monopolist is faced with the following cost and revenue curves. Everything is straight line. It's a highly uh, idealized case. Usually we have curves. So MC, AC, AR, and the green line, MR. MR can be negative. So A now. What is the maximum Profit output here. Sorry, say it again. Two hundred. Uh, why is it so? Two hundred. Why is it two hundred? Okay. So the rule applies here again. MC equals MR is maximum output case quantity equilibrium. So it's this point here, isn't it? MC equals MR. So this is the output corresponding to that point. Right, next question. What is the maximum profit price, guys? It's 40. It's 40. 40? Why is it 40? It's yeah? It's hmm? Where is the demand curve here? Exist. AR. <laughs> demand is AR, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so where do you get the, don't you get the prices on the demand curve instead? Oh. Prices are always, a demand curve is a combination of uh, price and, is a function of price and quantity. So track it upwards further up. Track the price further up. So go up, 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 up. up. Ah, this, here it is. It's on the demand curve, isn't it? It's 60 pounds. Price is equal to 60 pounds. That corresponds to this point. That corresponds to this point, isn't it? So demand. Uh, why did we not do this in the perfect competition, guys? Yeah? Yeah, at the time, it was only flat line, straight line, flat. Because remember, this was the demand curve at the time, yeah? when we did it in the first question, I mean. Mm. For perfect competition, MR was equal to AR. Mm. And crossing point was mm. price as well for us. <laughs> so that's why. But here you have a downward sloping demand curve. So carefully read it, please, when you are doing in the test. What is the total revenue at this price and output? Yeah? 6,000 pounds, do you agree with that figure? I don't know if I have the answer here. 16,200. So that looks like 12,000 then. So let's see, uh, is it profit, it's, it's include, or revenue? Total revenue. He calculated the profit, I suppose. You see, revenue is basically 60 pounds 
that's the price times the quantity so total revenue price times quantity price is 60 quantity 200, 200 and 100 that's the answer so that's C isn't it mm. next what is the total cost at this price and output? Six thousand. So that's the total cost is um, average cost times quantity. So what's the average cost? So that's that. Thirty times two hundred. Now I think it's E where we now get your answer. What is the level of profit at this price and output? So level of profit. What's profit? So that's total profit, yeah? So it's the uh, average cost and price. So price minus average cost is? So price is 60, 60. minus 30 times 200 6000 that's it so it's this area here right revenue is when you uh, include costs so it's all the sales you received money you received for sales and when you take away the costs, you receive profit amount. So revenue is gross profit. Hmm? Revenue is gross profit. No, gross profit is, is a slightly different term. Gross profit is is an accounting term where includes excludes the cost of goods sold, but includes still the uh, uh, expense, administrative expenses. So if you look at accounting, you have revenue minus cost of goods sold this gives you gross profit this is still gross because it, you haven't taken out the period ex expenses like the fixed costs and wages so then it comes to administrative expenses then comes the wages then you get net profit so total profit is different from this one now. here in this case we I shouldn't say total profit because it confused maybe that's why you're asking <laughs> it's not gross profit it's just the final profit of taking out the, all the costs because in economics we ignore the gross profit thing things like this it's not an accounting term that we use okay um, what's the level of profit okay. F if the monopolist were ordered to produce 300 units what would be the market price this must be easy to do now Hmm? Is everyone happy with that answer? 300 units. Trace it out here to... On. So this is the demand curve, yeah? Price is then 50. <coughs> Clear? Next. How much profit would now be made at 300 units? Sleeping. <laughs> Did you have classes today? Lots of them. Yeah. Too bad. Hmm? Packed schedule. Packed schedule. So you, hopefully you had lunch. <laughs> Managed to have lunch, I mean. Okay, so what do you think the profit is here? Oh, it's too easy for him. He's just sleeping. Too easy. Hmm? What was it? How about others? Is the profit for 4,500, guys? Yeah. So let's see, let's see. At 300, this is our average cost, right? Mm -hmm. This is the average cost, which appears to be 35. And price appears to be 50. Yeah? Price is 50 pounds. Average cost is 35. Then the difference is 15 times it by 300. This gives us profit. 
that's it understood it's getting messy though the the graph so that's why i need to ask is is this clear guys yeah um is it which one is it now h now if monopolists were faced with the same demand but average costs were constant at 60 pounds per unit what output would maximize profit now so let's move it to uh, somewhere clear so if the monopolist is facing a case where ac ac equals 60 pounds and um, if AC is 60 pounds, question is, what output would maximize profit? So now you need to find the profit maximizing point. So what's 60 here? So let's trace this. So it's constant case here. This is AC. And in this case, we don't have this. It's a constant cost. What's the profit maximizing output? 200. 100. If the AC is constant, what does it mean? Yeah, MC must be constant too then. Yeah, if additional pro products are made at the same cost each time, then average cost will be also be the same. Because average cost changes only because of variable costs, which only changes because of marginal costs. So average cost, so that means then EMC is also constant. So this is not here then, we, we, should, we should remove them. So we only have marginal revenue, average revenue, and this case where EMC equals to AC. Then they cross at 100. at 100. So this is where marginal cost intersects with Average, yeah, marginal revenue. Makes sense, yeah. everyone. Clear, guys. So why is it, uh, AC and MC. Sorry, say it again. Uh, why is it intersection MR, not AR? Okay, um, because the question asks us profit maximizing output level, and that's only when MR equals MC. And in this case, when the average cost is constant, our MC is also average cost. MC is equal to average cost, yeah? AC and MC are the same. And the case where our MC and MR are equal is this case, this point. Mm -hmm. So it's 100 units. Profit maximizing output is 100 units. Next. Oh, it's a quite a long one. Uh, quite a few left, I mean. What would be the price now? Let others speak, guys. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Who wants to answer this question? Uh, it's 70. I think you are speaking too much as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let others, I mean. <laughs> I mean, you guys have, have having had, uh, having, what you call this? You are, participating more often than others so it's best to let others to speak as well so that they also learn they also improve their speaking skills okay i'll have to pick now yeah. i think he won't know it he's sleeping yeah. <laughs> we'll ask this to ladies do you want to answer the question yeah go ahead you too. Help him. Help her. So, which one are we on now? We question, uh, we're question. doing question I. What would be the price now? Um, 70. 70. Why is it? Because. Because, yeah. That's the correct answer, actually. It's actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you know it's 70 otherwise, if, it, no, if you think it's not the answer? Okay. 
this, uh, the prices are located on the demand curve usually. Yeah, at this output, profit maximizing point is 70. Yeah, price is 70, yes, correct. Um, how much profit would now be made now, your, your friend? How much is the profit now at that price and quantity? So, so at this pr at this price, our quantity is one hundred. Yeah, price is seventy minus average cost is sixty fixed. Yeah, so that gives us one thousand. Profit is one thousand pounds. Uh, Why did you get from? Where did you get the five hundred? So it's it's this, isn't it? This area. This is what? What's the distance here? 10. Distance here is 100. 100 times 10 gives us the surface of that rectangle. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's next time we'll be uh, participating now. Okay, yeah. assume now that the monopoly decides not to maximize profit but instead sets the price at 40 pounds. And then how much will now be sold? Who wants to answer this question now? Yes, but then why are, you, why are you speaking too fast? I was going to ask someone else. <laughs> okay, it is 400 units. Um, because obviously you had this 40 pounds, you trace out the to demand curve to this point, which then trace back to 400 units. So that's it. Next, um, maybe next time we'll be waiting for others, give, a, give others a chance. So uh, what is the margin revenue at this point, that, at this output? What's the margin revenue at this output? 400 units. So um, at 400 units, Margin revenue is zero, yeah. Next question. Is every, everything clear, guys? Yeah. Next, uh, what does the answer to L indicate about total revenue at a price of 40 pounds? There was a rule, if you remember. I'll draw this a little to help you, but Try to answer that. So this is price or AC or variable cost, whatever it is, this quantity. Right below it is the same mapping, except that this becomes total revenue. So going back, let's read it. What does the answer to one indicate about total revenue at a price of 40 pounds? So at that price, so say this is... It is maximized. What's maximized? Is this correct, guys? Is this answer correct, what she just said? Will the total profit be maximized at that point? Did you, yes. Total revenue will be maximized, yes. Total revenue will hit its maximum point. And that's what happens at that point. This is our total revenue. It corresponds to the point there. So this is uh, 400 units, 400 units. And what's the value of elasticity in this? At, uh, not, not everyone, please, I'll pick now. So let's read the question, okay. Okay, what is the price elasticity of demand at a price of 40 pounds, right? 
So let's pick someone now. Do you remember? This is something that you need to memorize actually for the test. Guys, what's the value of elasticity on the demand curve at this point? This is something holds universally that that is an economic principle. Do you remember? For example, you've been sleeping. I decided to let you. You don't know? Anyone remember it? Um, Guys at the back, girls at the back here, and you, for example, you've been quiet all the time, or you, quiet. Much this, I didn't get it. So, the price elasticity of demand is what's the value at that point when the price is 40, when the margin revenue is zero? Minus one. It's always minus one. When the margin revenue is zero, it's always minus one. Keep this in mind. And we, the rule was this, basically. Remember, it was uh, week, week, week two, I think we had this. So this is equal to minus one at one single point. This is unit elastic point. Then above that value, above that point, elasticity in this range is greater than minus one. In this range, elasticity is always less than minus one. Keep this. It's it's more like a, a rule book that you need to have to put this, plug this in all the time. Um, that's it. Uh, number six is not difficult. It just requires us to fill in the form, but we are running out of time now. So we'll finish at this point. And I'll just upload the answers to number six and the rest. Take a look. It's just calculation of margin revenues and, and then drawing them. Any questions? So far, no? No question? Okay.